So let's do a two-tailed t-test. Here we have a simple regression model. We have regressed log wage on years of experience. Here's a little scatter plot of our data. And uh, we found this intercept and we found this slope coefficient. Here we have the standard arrows and next to it um, t-value columns and a p-value columns. Now let's test the following null hypothesis. So let's start considering this. Let's test the hypothesis that beta 1 is equal to 0. That would mean that years of experience have no impact on the log wage. The alternative would be that beta 1 is unequal to 0, meaning there is some relationship between years of experience and log wage. Now, testing this hypothesis is in a way not so interesting because all the results, in particular the t test value, is given in the column next to the standard errors. For this reason, we will test a slightly different hypothesis. Let us test the hypothesis that every additional year increases wage by 2%, and that's equivalent to the coefficient of 0.02 in this log linear model. We also need to set an alpha. We set that to 5%. That's the probability of a type 1 error. And then importantly, we need to know what test statistic to use. Here it is a t-test, and that's calculated as beta 1 hat minus beta 1 divided by the standard error of beta 1 hat. Now, how's that distributed? you know, given the classic linear regression assumptions, that this is t distributed with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. Why is that 2? Because we are estimating two parameters. So next, we need the decision rule. That's really the most important part of formulating a hypothesis test. In general, it reads reject h0 if t is something compared to a critical value. Now, that's something, given we have a two-tail test, that is going to drive what this rejection rule, oh, sorry, decision rule precisely reads. I like having a picture in my mind. Here it goes. I'll draw two lines, one for beta 1 hat and one for the t statistic t. Once you're a little bit used to doing this, you possibly get away with just doing the one for the t. Now, Let's hypothesize, as we did, that beta 1 is 0 0.02. In that case, we know that the distribution for beta 1 hat looks like this. It will be centered around that hypothesized value. Now, if we obtained a sample estimate that lies in the tails of this distribution, this would possibly mean that we find evidence that's not consistent with that hypothesis. Now, the t-test is basically a standardized version of beta 1 hat, and it standardizes it to be centered around zero, but otherwise the picture will look exactly the same. We will want to reject our null hypothesis if now our t-test statistic is in the tail of that distribution for the t-test. Okay, but it, it means like getting extreme values for beta 1 hat relative to our hypothesis. If we get T stats or beta 1 hat values inside that corridor, we will not want to reject H0. So now the question is, what are these values that basically divide our world into a rejection and a not rejection area? That depends on how big we want this area to be, or how extreme we allow values to be without rejecting. And that's going to be driven by our alpha value, the probability for type 1 error. In a two-tail test, we want these tails to have the size of alpha half. In this case, therefore, 2.5%. That's because it's a two-tail test. Now we need to go to the t table because our test statistic is t distributed. We look at the value for alpha 5% or one-tailed, as we just saw, 2.5% go to the degrees of freedom, we have a lot, so we go to this infinity row and we can read off a value of 1.96. So this value that cuts off the tails is going to be 1.96. Also note that in this t distribution table, the last row with degrees of freedom infinity is really the same as the data from a standard normal distribution. So it was 1.96 we can now enter this value in our little picture to see 
what these critical values are. So let's replace the critical values with 1.96. We have a negative 1.96 on the left hand side and a positive 1.96 on the right hand side as the t distribution and the normal are symmetric. So now we can go to our decision rule. If we land outside these boundaries, the same as saying the absolute value of the t statistic is larger than the critical value of 1.96. So now we actually going to use our data. Everything so far has been done without really looking at the data. So let's calculate our t statistic, 0.015201. That's our beta 1 hat. It comes from the regression output minus 0.02, that comes from the hypothesis, divided by the standard error of beta 1 hat, 0.004287, that comes from the regression output. Once you calculate that, you get a value of negative 1.1194. So let's see where that lies in the graph. It's somewhere here, negative 1.12. It is clearly in the do not reject region. So therefore, our conclusion is do not reject the null hypothesis. Our null hypothesis was that beta 1 has a value of 0.02 that corresponded to saying that every additional year of experience on average gives you a, an additional 2% of wage. And we have to say that the data we have are consistent with this hypothesis. There's no evidence to reject this hypothesis.